everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. While the earthquakes continue, they're off the coast of Yamada, Japan, northeastern Japan. Um, it's being caused by the subduction of the Pacific Plate. And under the Okhotsk Plate, a lot of tension has built in this location. The bullet train um, is going to be closed down for repairs, they're saying. Um, they haven't indicated what type of repairs, but from um, about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. local time, they're going to be re working on the uh, bullet train lines. There has been a lot of um, animal impacts on the trains uh, or by the train, um, bears and also deers in the location. And after these earthquakes, yeah, there was brief power outages and a tsunami alert that was sent out that was canceled about three hours later. The Japanese Meteorological Society is warning people that there could be another six point or greater earthquake within the next one to two weeks. Other geologists are saying uh, they could have a magnitude nine. And historically, they've had a lot of earthquakes uh, back in 2011, a 9.0. And in 1585, close to the same location, a 9.25. Remember, after my last report, I told you guys there was probably a large earthquake coming. And yeah, in fact, it did happen. At the time of my report, there was over 150 earthquakes within 48 hours. I don't know how many there's been now, but uh, they're saying the 6.8 is the foreshock to the 6.4, which is odd. The latest earthquake that the uh, Japanese Meteorological Society is reporting is a 5.1 intensity level 2. Let me bring this over. Here on the right, you can see the intensity level. So this 5.1 was an intensity level 2. And then next was a magnitude 6.2. USGS said it was a 6.0. They gave it an intensity level of 2 and 3. And I'll bring it back over. The next earthquake be before that 6.2 was a 5.2 intensity level 2. And then they have a 5.3, which we got intensity level 2 and 3. And then the one before that was a 5.1 intensity level 2. Well, we got a 4.5 that no one said they felt it. Another 4.5. Again, no reports. And then a 4.9 intensity level uh, 2. And then a 4.8, also an intensity level 2. 4.4, no one said they felt that one. Um, a 4.6, again, no reports. Um, a 4.9, surprisingly, no reports from that one either. Um, another 4.9. Uh, I'm sure people felt the ones that aren't being reported, but the uh, J uh, JMA isn't posting them. Then we got a 5.6. You can see up here, this is Japan time, 1828, intensity level 2 and 3. Then we got a 4.6. Again, no reports. Um, a 4.7. Uh, another 4.7, but people said that probably felt like an intensity level 2. Um, a 5.2, intensity level 2 and 3. Um, and then there's a 6.3, intensity level. Um, two and three. Now USGS says that was a 6.4, but there in Japan they said it was a 6.3. They're saying this is the aftershock. And then before that there was a 5.3, a 5.6, and the 6.7. This is the main shock they're saying. Let me bring this over. Um, it was an intensity level of maybe four to five. But USGS gave it a magnitude 6.8. I think originally USGS said it was a 6.7. And they upgraded it. 
Let me bring it out. Yeah, it was felt over a really wide area. Look at that. All the way to the north and to the south. They also are reporting that the fault along here ruptured about 15 kilometers, which is about 9.3 miles. You know, in comparison, the uh, 2011 earthquake ruptured about 200 miles or about 450 kilometers. And again, that was a super sheer earthquake uh, where the earthquake actually, the movement of the fault moved faster than the speed of sound. So this uh, 6.8 was nothing compared to that. But it does show you the potential of what could happen. The Japanese authorities are telling people, do not panic. Yeah, there's still a chance within a week, maybe two weeks, of another 6.0 or larger. Just continue doing your earthquake preparedness uh, drills and whatever else you might need to do. They are saying that there's been 60 to 70 aftershocks, mostly a magnitude 4 or greater. Not all earthquakes have been publicly posted, but uh, for all earthquakes, still between 120 to 150 earthquakes within the last 48 hours. That's within just this region here. All the magnitude um, 4 or greater have been reported as thrust earthquakes. Yeah, those are the worst kind that you can possibly have. I've talked about, a lot about that in the past videos for thrust earthquakes in, in other locations. So for the last 24 hours, somewhere between 60 to 80 earthquakes. That's a lot. Yeah, a lot of them haven't been posted yet. I don't know why. Uh, that's hard to say. They might be waiting for manual reviews, but many of them are automatically posted by, the, you know, the computers. So they may be waiting for a review by the geologists before they post them all. They say that USGS only reports magnitude 2.5 or greater. That way they can avoid overwhelming users with all the earthquakes. There is a possibility, too, of 95 earthquakes, less than a magnitude 4, that still have to be reviewed. 95, can you imagine that in 24 hours? Yeah, they have to be reviewed first before they're going to post them. That's a lot to wait to be reviewed, 95. Those lists of earthquakes might be available anywhere between the 12th and the 13th of this month. But anyways, in the meantime, yeah, they're telling people, don't panic. Keep preparing. Um, yeah, keep your head on a swivel. Be alert. Do what you need to do to prepare for an earthquake. So that's all I have for you right now. If you have any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you very much for watching. Always stay safe. Be prepared. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.